Sunny Miller. Uh, once again, welcome to Simonson. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So uh, when, when, I, when we speak, you can you can look straight into the camera. Yes, sir. Uh, you don't have to necessarily look at me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How did you sleep last night? I slept quite well, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Miller, tell me, since you and I first met, uh, for those of you Facebook people that are just joining us now, this is ex. Zambia National Service Officer Milan Goma, who was dishonorably discharged from the service, and since that time he's, he was living on the street, living in a booth. He was basically homeless, but now, uh, with the advent of social media, he's he's been able to find some type of lodging. Um, are you are you now are you still living in a booth? No, I'm not. Uh, where are you living? I'm living somewhere in Romopak by a war wisher. But that war wisher uh, decided that I should not disclose who they are because they do not want to be known by the public. Okay, that's yeah. understood. So, Miller, walk us through. I know you did mention this when I first met, met you on the street. You did mention that you were dishonorably discharged. T t walk us through that. What exactly happened? Why were you dishonorably discharged? Okay, over the issue of uh, the job, I I would not really not I will not comment much because I noticed that the 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 chief the chief of the armed forces, who is our president, was tagged in the post, and uh, if there's a possibility of me being reinstated, um, it could. What I could say right now could work against me. So I would rather not comment about my job. I will not say much about the ZNS thing because it could work against me. Military is not public. It's usually we are secretive with what goes on. So I will not mention much about the job. But those who are in the ZNS and those who are there, they know exactly what happened. Okay. Okay, I understand that. Now, uh, I must tell you, Miller, as I mentioned to you before, that uh, when your story went public, many people called you. Yes, sir. Many different people from people that you went to school with. Yes, sir. People that you went to secondary school with. Your stepmother phoned me. She spoke to me. Your, your biological father. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you, sir, but um, he is not my father. If he, was, if, he, if, he, if he was my father, I wasn't going to be sleeping on the streets. The only father that I have as of now is God. And it's because of God that I have a home today. So that man, Mr. Ngoma, you are not my father. I don't have a stepmother either. If she was my stepmother, I was not going to be sleeping on the streets. I have slept on the streets. I have been hungry before. I have begged before. I know how hard it is. So if those are my parents, I was literally being passed bread in Shema through the window because I couldn't be allowed inside. My young brother can attest to that. And then today, just because it's gone viral, they want to come out and claim to be my parents. I'm sorry, you're not my parents. You've never been my parents. If you're my parents, I wasn't going to be sleeping on the streets. And please, please, I beg in the name of Jesus, let people out of goodwill help me and give me a, be a better life that you've failed to give me. You rejected me. So let me be. Don't even, don't even make a mistake of calling Mr. Simon. Mr. Simon, it's because of him that I'm here. I even have a home today. I look better. If you ask him how I was looking in the... Or if you compare how I was looking in the first region, how I look now, to two different people, and then to, you come up today and claim to be my father. Mr. Ngoma, what really hurts you is that I told you the truth. That very night, I told you the truth. That's why you rejected me. I will not, so the, I will not say the kind of truth that I said, but you know the truth that I said. And I will not say it. Because out of respect, I will not say it. For, my, for the woman that claims to be, my, to be my stepmother, for you, I don't have anything for you. Just be as you are, and I'll be as I am. Miller, let me ask you, because, you know, there are certain people that listen to this, they listen to you speak. You sound like you're, you know, you've, you've got a lot of hurt 
a lot of um, uh, maybe anger and uh, unforgiveness maybe. And, but let me finish my thought. The question is this. Is your relationship with your father that bad that you would you would call him uh, a person that is not your father? Is it that bad? I, I don't have a relationship with him. Why is that, Billy? Why? I don't. So you you would not let your son sleep on the streets. You would not ask your workmates to tell your son who's waiting for you. So when I was released from prison. I went to my father's house. I slept on the veranda, waiting because they locked the house out of instruction from my stepmother to say Mila should not come in. I slept on the veranda waiting for my father. My father that night, he did not even show up. He just asked his neighbor, his workmate, to say go and tell Mila to leave. That, that, that man is still there. He's my father's neighbor. He just came and said, Mila, just leave. I remember I asked that man for one thing, I just told him, help me with some food, and he gave me some food, and off I left. He was, Mr. Ngoma was being told to say, your son is on the streets, he's sleeping on the streets, he's begging. But then my father never for a single day ever looked for me, never. And then today, just because it's gone viral, he wants to reach out and claim to be my father. No, the only father I have is God. You are not my father. You are not. If you are my father, you would have helped me. You know that I've been battling depression. If you search for Mila Disuesa, if you check, I joined Facebook from somewhere between 2008 and 2009. If you check my posts, they are also suicidal or depressional and all of that. And all my school friends can say that I have battled depression for a very long time, which led me to start abusing Berlin with codeine, depress antidepressants. And then now, not everybody failed to help me. They all rejected me. So at this time, when things have gone viral, this is when you want to call yourself my father. You want to call yourself my stepmother. Have a heart. Please, have a heart. Miller, I feel your pain. I do. Uh, but, but I really want to get to the bottom of this. Because allow me, you need to let me tell you what your father said to me. Because your father called me. Okay? And when I say your father, I'm speaking about your biological father. Mr. Goma phoned me and he said, first of all, he talked about how bright you are. That's what he said to me. He talked about how intelligent you are. He said, my son is a very intelligent boy, but he lost it when he got involved with drugs. No, that's not true. No, hold on, uh, uh, Miller, let me, let me finish what, let me tell you what he said. And he said that, as a father, I did everything to help him. But he lost his way because of drugs. Now, it, it, it appears to me that something went wrong there. On your side, you're telling us that he didn't care for you. On his side, he's telling us that he loves you. He, he has faith in your ability to, to make something of yourself. But he emphasized that what derailed you was this this problem you had with substance abuse. Okay, if I had that problem, why didn't he help me out? Why didn't he stand up and help me out? He knew that I was on the streets. There are rehab centers. Why didn't he take me to a rehab center? Why didn't he stand by me? You know, when you are dealing... He said he, he, said he did. If he, and your stepmother said that. Your stepmother said you were sent to rehab. Your father said you were sent to rehab. But that didn't help. They said that to you. They may say that, but I'm not here to, to, ex, to, ex, to exchange words with who said what and who said what. Yes, Mr. Ngoma may have said that, but the only rehab I went to was Minor Soko, which is a military hospital. Yes, he said, he said Minor Soko. That was when... Um, at work, ZNS realized that I have an uh, antidepressant problem. That's, what, that's when I went to my Nasoko. And then after going to my Nasoko, of course, it never worked out. But then... What do you mean it didn't work out? What didn't work out? The whole program never worked out. Meaning what? 
uh, you can imagine him going for rehab, but it's all military. It's, it was all military. It wasn't really rehab. It was all military. You know, somebody who's counseling you is is your senior, and it's you have to take it like it's a job. It wasn't really like a counseling session. It was all like you're talking to your senior, so you you just have to be oh it's yes sir, no sir, yes sir, no sir. That's what it was like. And if really he claims to be was my father, why was he letting me sleep on the streets? Why didn't he come and pick me up and take me home? I have seen people that are uh, abusing drugs. I have seen people, but they are being kept by their parents. I have seen such people. They are such people. But for him, why did he reject me? Why? Miller, can I ask you, have you ever felt in your heart to forgive your parents? forgive them because let me, let me tell you why I say this you are clearly in a lot of pain you are clearly in a lot of pain what would help you okay hold on Miller what would help you the first step Miller is to forgive your mom and dad Mister. start from there if, if you start from there Miller you've got hope but I'm telling you, Miller, if you don't do that, it's going to kill you. It's going to kill you. It's going to kill you. Okay. Um, in that, my father had the courage of coming here. I didn't want to say this, but I'm going to say it. What hurts my father so much, may God forgive me for saying this. I, didn't, I never intended to say this. But I'm going to say it. Um, my father, when I, when I lost the job, I went to stay with my father. And every day when he comes back drunk and the like, he would always beat me about the job. Hey, I got you. I found you a better job. You'd always talk to me. You know what it's like when you, somebody gets you a job and you lose it. And then he would always talk about it. And then, so one time, equally, I have got my own problem, my own pain. I, I lost it and then I told him straight up to say you're always blaming me about the job but you infected my young sister because of your carelessness. I'm sure you know what that means. When I said that my father lost it and he always hated me and then I also told him to say you infected my stepmother because of your carelessness but nobody talks about that but you're always talking about my mistake. Just because I mentioned that truth my father hated me from that time and even told me to say, I don't want anything to do with you. There are so many times I've called him, I've told people to say, help me talk to my father so that he can forgive me. He's always refused, he's always denied. So even if, even the neighbors can state, I've gone there several times, I'd be given food, bread off the window. When I was in prison, um, I have a, a stepbrother, Mike Monuka. Um, when I was in prison, some things went missing uh, in Ibex, where they stay. And then they start accusing you, say, it's Mila who stole this, it's Mila who stole this. But I was in prison. How would I have stolen that? How? I was in prison. Okay. You, know, you, know, you sound to me, you sound to me like someone, like, again, I have to say, I understand your pain, but you sound to me, what do you say to people that say you blame everybody except yourself? You, you blame everyone except yourself. You, you, you push the responsibility of the pain on everyone except you. What do you say to people that say that? I do not blame anybody. I blame myself for being so weak and going on the antidepressants, which was bending with codeine. That was my downfall. I blame myself, I do not blame anybody. So there's nobody that I blame, I blame myself. That's why when my father rejected me, I let him be. And that's why I don't even call him, I don't ask him for anything. So whatever that he's come here to say, or he called you and said that and said that, even my stepmom, you know, I'll go home, ask for food, and she'll just drive out and tell my half-brother to say, Akaenda or your tell you. Meaning, when, my, when Mila goes, let me know. And that's when she'll come back home. 
I remember in this I'll mention one time I got so so hungry it was a Sunday I had no choice but I went to a pastor and I explained to him and the pastor said look at this tell your stepmother that um, let her just send something for bread so that we can use that bread as forgiveness so that she forgive I remember she sent a 105 she sent that money that money only kept me for about two three days but then later on she calls on and starts blaming me to say you see there you are now you're begging she starts beating me down beating me down about the job the problem with my the very stepmother and mr ngoma i'm sorry for it i cannot call you father anymore i'm sorry i'm sorry i cannot call you father anymore but i'll call you mr ngoma the problem with you is that you are holding on to what i said just because i said you infected my stepmom and my little sister when you've you always infected, hated when you say infected what do you mean okay maybe maybe we shouldn't talk about that because uh, I would rather not talk about okay. that. Let's not talk about it. Let's, uh, let's get to the bottom line of this, uh, Miller. Miller, I also must tell you that um, someone from ZNS found me, from Zambia National Service, and they told me that it is possible that you could, st even though you were dishonorably discharged, it's possible that you could still be receiving a salary. Are you aware of that? Um, there is uh, an intakement who sent me a message, Hillary. He sent me a message saying, check your account, the commandant has been changed. So there are things which have been changed. There was, um, uh, what's this? Uh, there was a, a memo that came out that stated that those that did not clock 10 years of service were to be removed off the payroll. I was commissioned in 2012. So, and then I was discharged in 2019, huh? 1918. So I didn't clock 10 years. So. I was removed off the payroll, but then Hillary told me to say there's a possibility that money could be coming in. But then when I went to Zanako, Zanako told me to say, bring your NRSC. And then I have no NRSC. So I have, uh, I have an affidavit which I have. Uh, uh, I've just shown Mr. Simon. I have an affidavit. You had it on just now. Oh, it's here. Yes. I have an affidavit trying to replace my NRSC. To confirm with the bank if really a salary has been coming in because the bank has to identify me by NRSC. So that is why I got this affidavit. And then when I tried to get a police report, I was told I have to pay a 74 quarter. Mm -hmm. That's how come I did not get the police report. So about that, I'm not yet sure. I'm yet to confirm with the bank. Because yes, someone from ZNS found me. Yes, sir. And they told me, they said that uh, it's possible that, that even though Miller was dishonorably discharged and because of the change of the constitution it's possible that he could be drawing a salary or sorry it, it's possible that he could be receiving a salary that's the word he used receiving a salary so he said to me he said when you find miller tell him to go to the bank because it's possible that you could be receiving money that you are unaware of but then he also cautioned me he said but ask him if he knows about it so let me ask you pointedly did you know that you were getting a salary? No, I didn't know. That's why I got this affidavit to have my NRSC replaced. The bank has to identify me with an NRSC. So the bank could not give me any information about my account. That's why I went to get this to replace my NRSC so that I could forget more information about my account. If there's any money, if any money has been coming in. That's why I went to get this. If you check the date of this, this is 22nd July, which is yesterday. Yeah. And the reason, the reason I'm asking, the reason I'm asking about your finances, Miller, is because people are helping you financially. You know, people are helping you financially, and I think it's only right and fair to sort of give them the, the clear picture. Sorry, just one second. Vasco, Vasco, if any of query, I want to start hammer, Vasco. But I can to the more interview, you know. The only reason I'm asking, I'm, 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 we're talking about your bank details, and I know some people on Facebook are, are they're saying to me now, those no, Mr. Boyer, don't ask him those. Those are personal issues. The reason I'm asking you about your finances is because people are helping you financially, and what you don't want to do is you don't want people to give the impression that you are receiving money, but at the same time 
you're, you're getting help from the public. No. So you've explained this very clearly. Yeah. Yes. So to me, the explanation is clear. Okay. And plus the money that you gave, you gave me a 500, the interview that we had last time, you gave me a 500. That's how come I look different. You gave me a 500 last time. And this is how come I look different. It's because of the 500 that you gave me last time. Well, it was from the people on Facebook. Yes, the, yeah, it's from the money that the, you, you people helped me. Yes. That's how come I look this way today. Yeah. So Miller, um, right the other day, a young lady came through. Her name is Tan Wamuson Da. She, okay. she brought um, us... Just one thing I want to mention is that um, Mr. Ngoma, I think um, in the same way that you rejected me, just forget about me. God will look after me. It's the same thing for my stepmother. Forget about me. Just continue living your lives as you as you have been living your lives. God will help will see me through. When I was sleeping in a booth, you knew about it, but you never did anything about it. So please, just because things have gone viral, you want to show up. No, it's not well, fair. Well, well, let, let me, me be. Let me ask you this though, Miller, because you know there, there are people that. What, what would you say to people that would say, "You are a grown man. You're 29 years old." And a very bright young man. I mean, you're not just some guy off the street. I mean, you're 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 a bright guy. Yes, sir. Hold on. This is a question. Uh, what would you say to people that say, "Well, you shouldn't have that attitude because nobody owes you a living, and you're not a child. You're a, you're a man, and and not just a man, an intelligent man. So why wouldn't you take care of yourself?" I was trying to take care of myself, but I couldn't find a job. There's less money in circulation. People can't employ you if they don't know you. Even just washing buses, the washing cars, there's monopoly of business. Even just throwing a mere bin, people can't allow you because they already have somebody who does it. You can ask people, I've been in shops asking for jobs just to throw a bin. Even just to wash mere place at, at the restaurant, they can't allow you if they don't know you. I have been through that. There are a lot of people that are just staying right now if they are just on phone looking for a job. As we talk right now, I know such people and I, I will not say much, but that's what is going on right now. There are less jobs. But if you know, yeah, you can, you can employ me and you can make good use of me, I'll be very much glad and I'm willing to take it up with two hands. And I'm not saying my pa Mr. Ngoma and the very stepmother, they don't owe me anything. Neither do I owe them anything. Let them be, let them live their lives, and also live my life. That, this is why things have gotten to this way, because I'm above 18. They don't owe me anything. This is why things have gotten to this extent. If really they were supposed to be taking care of me even after, even though I'm after 18, then it, things were not going to reach to this extent. Things have gotten to this extent because after 18 you have to take care of yourself, and I tried what I could and things could not work out. Miller, a young girl by the name of Tan Wamsonda, she came through and she bought me this phone. Thank you. So let me just, just, just open what's in there. So that's, that's a phone for you to, to be able to... She did everything for you. Tan Wamsonda is her name. Okay. So she's got a, a phone there for you. Just hold the phone up, please. Yeah, phone. And then uh, the SIM card. She gave you a SIM card there. And the SIM card. And she's got the receipt for the phone as well. Yeah. And then there's a hundred kwacha in there so that she can buy talk time. Yeah. Right. So that, that's from Kabom Sonda. So if you yeah. can look in the, into the camera now and just just thank her. Kangom Sonda, thank you very much. I really appreciate. I'm looking forward to in meeting you. I hope I'll see you very soon. Uh, I hope I'll be able to find your contact from Mr. Mr. Mawa. Yeah. Thank you very much. I really appreciate. Yeah. May God replace where you have taken from. God bless you. So now, Miller, this this is what I want to see. Okay. Yes, sir. This is what I want to see. I want to see you get back on your feet. You know, you, me giving the audience, the Facebook audience, updates. That's fine. But then, what I don't want is for you to be stuck at one point in a in a perpetual cycle. You know, I, I mean, I don't want you to be coming here every six weeks. Give me an update. What I want to see is progress. Is you standing on your feet, 
working, making a living, using that brain of yours that 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 is not just given to anybody, okay? Because yeah. you you you've got a bright brain in there, okay? That's what we want to see. And Miller, everybody wants to see you win. Let's look at this. Sir. Um, being helped is the first thing, but helping yourself is the next thing and it's for the forever thing that you have to do being helped is the first thing but helping yourself is the next thing so i may be helped and it's the first thing and helping myself is the forever thing so it's not always that i'll depend on people no i'm going to stand on my own two feet i know i'm the type of person that this time around i'm supposed to be dra driving probably a range rover or something i just just i just don't know how i derailed I know what I'm capable of doing and definitely people will see me in a better place, that I can assure you, no matter what. I hope so, man. Yes. I hope so because the public wants to... Let me, let me tell you how social media works, Miller, okay? I know this because I've been in social media for a long time. Yes, sir. What these guys on social media are doing is right now you've got a lot of goodwill from the public. Yes, sir. Okay? Now, the great thing is that everybody knows you've had a substance problem. Everybody knows that that not so good part of you. Everybody, listen, there's no perfect person. We all have our own demons. Yeah, there's our nobody, clothes. there's nobody yeah. that's perfect. But, Miller, given the goodwill that you've been receiving, these guys here on Facebook are very impatient people. Okay? Yes, sir. They're impatient. They want to see you win. By winning, I mean, they want to hear two, three months from now, they want to hear, oh, Miller works, Miller is on his feet, Miller's doing well, he's independent, he works for himself, he doesn't depend on anyone, he doesn't ask for money, he doesn't beg for money, that's what they want. They don't want to hear that you're in a slump. They don't want to hear that six months from now, you're, you're off telling someone a, the same story in a different circumstance. No. Guess what's going to happen, Miller? If these guys on Facebook hear that, guess what's going to happen? They're going to turn against you like Judas. That's true. Yeah. They will turn against you like Judas, uh, 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 Miller. Hold on, Miller. Let me tell you. Don't take this goodwill for granted. Exactly. I, I warn you, son. Yes, sir. These guys on Facebook are giving you a chance to win. All of them are rooting for you. Rooting for you meaning they want to see you succeed. Yes. But they don't want to see you in a rut. They don't want to see you in the same spot complaining about the same stuff, over whining over. about the same yeah. problems, over and, and over walking again. around with no forgiveness in your heart. They don't want to see that. They want to see you move on. They want to see you be a whole person, Miller. A whole person. Are you hearing me? Yes, I'm hearing you. My aim is to help people in my situation and I'm going to help a lot of people. That I can assure you, I'm going to help a lot of people that are in my situation. Well, forget them. Help yourself first. Okay? Yes, sir. When you're, when you're in a plane and the plane is about to go down, guess what the air hostesses say to you? Have you been on a plane, Miller? Mm. Have you ever been on a plane? Yes, I have. I have. I yeah. Have. When you're on a plane, the air hostesses say to you, Put the oxygen mask on, on first. first. It's going to drop from the sky and from the top. And, yeah. You put it on first, then you can help someone else. So help you first, okay? Yes, sir. All right, man. You take care. All right. Thank Save you. Out of the people. All right. Thank you, people. Alright, that's all for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.